So now our goal is to solve this differential equation. And remember that last time we made a guess that u of y would take on such a form. And then we found the second derivative of the function u with respect to y. And then we found that it was equal to this expression. So now we're ready to substitute this expression back into this differential equation. So the left hand side is equal to the second derivative, which we have over here. And on the right hand side, we have all this stuff that we have over here. So I'm just going to directly substitute this expression inside. And then what you're going to get on the right hand side is equal to, first of all, you have a u, so it's equal to y to the power of l plus 1, e to the power of negative y, v of y. And then the second term, I have y naught. And then this y cancels out with one of the, uh, this plus, plus 1 in the exponent. So what we're going to get is y to the power of l, e to the power of negative y, v y. And the same goes over here. This time it's y squared, so it takes away 2 from the exponent. So what we're going to get is plus l l plus 1 y to the power of l minus 1 e to the power of negative y v of y so this is going to be the right hand side and then what we're going to do next is that i'm going to divide both sides by y to the power of l minus 1 e to the power of negative y so you can see that all these terms will cancel out and then these terms will cancel out and then since we have a, a y to the power of l minus 1 this will cancel out and then this will cancel out, so only one y will remain. This will cancel out, and then what we're going to get is a y square. And then this will cancel out, so all we have left is a y. And so this is how we can simplify, further simplify this differential equation. So now I'm going to try to group up all the uh, terms together. So first of all, let us group the terms with the d square v dy square, and you can see that there's only one, and then we multiply this y uh, over here with this y, so what we're going to get is y square d square v d y square, and then we also have the dv dy terms, so we plus 2y l plus 1 minus y dv dy, so that's these terms, so we've considered these, and now we need to combine the terms that have a vy attached to them, so let's, uh, let's count them but one by one, so we have a negative 2l, so don't forget to multiply this by y, so we have negative 2ly, so we've considered this, we have a negative 2, so negative 2y, and then we have this term, this becomes y squared, so don't forget, don't multiply this with the y at the front, and then we have a l times l plus 1. And then don't forget, we also have these terms on the right hand side of the equation, so I'm going to dump them over to the left hand side, to the left of the equal sign. So I'm going to dump them over to the left hand side, and then here we have a y squared, so I'm going to have to put a minus y squared, because I'm dumping this to the left hand side. Here we have y0 times positive y, so we have plus y0 times y, and then here we have l times l plus 1, so we're going to dump that to the other side, so we get minus l, l plus 1, and then all these terms will be attached to a v to the part, uh, to a vy, and then all this is going to be equal to 0. So obviously you can see that for this expression here we can do some simplification, so these thankfully they cancel out, these y squares, they cancel out. So let's open a new page. So, so far what we have now is a y squared times d squared v dy squared. And then we have a plus 2y l plus 1 minus y dv dy. And then here what we have is, first of all, we have a y naught times y. So this we have considered. And then we have a negative 2y and then we also have a negative 2ly and these will be attached to the term vy and this is all equal to 0 so obviously we can do some simplification here I can just pull out the y to the outside and then we're going to get y naught minus 2 minus 2l uh, times v of y and of course I can further simplify this a bit so I prefer pulling the 2 out and then expressing this as L plus 1, just as Griffiths does in his textbook. And so there we have it. And you can see that for all these three terms that we have over here, they all have a extra y term, so I can divide y on both sides. So this would go away, this would go away, and this would go away. So in the end, ultimately we're left with something like this. We have arrived at this differential equation for the function v dv dy plus y naught minus 2 L plus 1, Vy is equal to 0. And there we have it. This is what we're looking for. This is 
the differential function where the subject is v of y. So if we can solve this differential equation, then we can, if we can find the function v of y that satisfies this differential equation, then we can take that function and then substitute it inside this expression. We can substitute it here, and that would give us the function u of y, which is exactly what we're looking for. So the next step that we're going to do is that we're going to guess another solution, is that we're going to guess that v of y is going to take on such a form. We guess that v of y is going to take on this sort of series form. So another way to write this out is equal to uh, some constant c0 plus c1 times y to the power of 1 plus c2 times y squared plus c3 times y to the power of 3 and so on. So it's perfectly fine for us to assume that v of y would take on such a form because we, uh, most functions can be expressed as a Taylor series. So if this was something like e to the power of y or something like that, then what we're going to get is this uh, the Taylor series of whatever function this is going to be. So it's perfectly perfectly fine for us to guess that v of y is going to take on such a form. So if we can find all these constants, c0, c1, c2, c3, so if we can find all these constants, so if we can find all these constants such that this series will satisfy this differential equation, then we would have essentially found v of y, and then we can substitute it back into here to find u of y. And so that is what we're going to do next. So now that we are guessing that v of y is going to take on such a form, we're going to take this expression and substitute it inside this differential equation, and hopefully it will give us some clues as to what these constants would be. Once we find these constants, then we would have found what this polynomial should be, and that would give us what the expression for v of y, which would ultimately give us u of y.